Hey guys, it's Chris. From the deepest places on Earth to newly discovered creatures, here are eight things you didn't know about the ocean. Number eight, how much of it have we explored? The uh, short answer is not much. The ocean is one of the greatest mysteries of our world, mainly because it covers about 70% of the Earth. But if you were to guess how much of the ocean's been explored and then mapped out, you might be surprised. Considering all the time that people have dedicated to studying the ocean, its events, its creatures, and more, surprisingly, we've only explored and mapped about 5% of the ocean floor. Yeah, just 5%. Again, this may not be an inconceivable thing to believe, but it is quite shocking. After all, we've mapped the layers of the ocean to some extent, but even using sonar, it's still only about 15%. We know about the Mariana Trench, which is 36,000 feet below sea level. We know about certain creatures and their depths and their life cycles and all of that. And yet, when you compile it all together, everything we've learned since truly starting to learn about the ocean, it only amounts to about 5% knowledge of what's out there. There are lakes on the ocean floor and all kinds of valleys and canyons. But deep sea exploration is very difficult for us humans, and we rely heavily on technology. According to World Atlas, more people have been on the moon than in the Mariana Trench. And just recently, a single volcanic rock structure was discovered with 297 new species of sea creatures. This just means there's way more out there to be discovered. Number 7. Hidden Lakes and Waterfalls Speaking of underwater lakes, when you dive into the ocean, something you wouldn't expect to find are other water formations like lakes and waterfalls. But guess what? They exist. For example, there's a lake within the bottom area of the Gulf of Mexico. It was one of the most amazing things in the deep sea. You go down into the bottom of the ocean and you're looking at a lake or a river flowing. It feels like you're not on this world. Professor Eric Corda has told Seeker, Now how can there be a lake underwater? It makes no sense, right? Well, the lake is actually five times as salty as any of the water around the lake. And because it's denser, it creates its own entity. Just as shocking, though, the water contains incredibly high levels of methane and hydrogen sulfide, making it both incredibly toxic and unable to mix with other waters. This is actually how rivers, waterfalls, and lakes form within bodies of water like oceans. There are strong currents that sweep across salt layers, and that salt gets pulverized by the water and actually merges with it in a way. This new stream of water becomes denser, and to that end, becomes a new extension of the waters of the area. And given the right circumstances, it can form a river, like the one in the Baltic Sea, or a waterfall, or even a lake. Their size is dependent on the formation of it, and some have them being as much as a few miles long at times. Number 6. Makes the Internet Work let me ask you a question. When you go on the internet and you get information, where does that information come from? Well, the simple answer is data banks, so I'm sure some of you are right. Especially if you're looking for information that's within your home country, you don't have to go too far for the information. But if you're looking for information on someone or something in another country, well, that's a whole different story. The way information passes from one country to another in regards to the internet is due to underwater data cables. In fact, 99% of all international data is transferred via these cables. This network is massive and spans hundreds of thousands of miles across many oceans, to and from many different countries, and they can reach very deep depths of the ocean. Mind you, these cables are carefully placed so that they don't interfere with the natural order of the world, including not messing with coral reefs. But there are natural dangers to this. The cables actually had to be fortified because of the fact that sharks were actually trying to eat them. I guess they were tired of the fish. Oh, and the cost of putting one of these cables into the ocean and getting them to where they need to go can cost hundreds of millions of dollars. Number 5. Up to 80% of all life is aquatic. This one may seem obvious, but the truth is, some people forget just how much life in the world is held within the oceans. After all, we live on land, and are often amazed by the wide variety of creatures that live on the ground. The grass, the trees, etc. But the ocean beats the land by a wide margin. 80% of all life on Earth is aquatic in nature at its highest estimates. That is a staggering amount when you consider all the life on land. 
A big reason for this, no doubt, is that the ocean is simply able to allow life to flourish without much issue. And just like land, there are various biomes and areas that can help certain creatures to live, while others can travel around the oceans with no major issue. That being said, the oceans are not as healthy as they used to be. Many scientists feel that numerous species of ocean and marine life are dying out because of things like human interference, climate change, pollution, and more. Soon we may lose things we didn't even know existed. Number 4. Sound travels really well While we can't really make that much noise underwater, some sounds can actually reach the deepest parts of the ocean's depths. This was done in a study by a team of engineers who dropped a titanium-crafted hydrophone, that's an aquatic microphone, into the ocean and then slowly lowered it into the depths of the Mariana Trench which if you recall is about 36,000 feet below sea level. After reaching the trench, they were shocked to find all sorts of noises being picked up. But not by the local life of the trench, but rather sounds of earthquakes happening great distances away, as well as the sounds of ships skimming the ocean's surface above. You would think that the deepest part of the ocean would be one of the quietest places on Earth. Chief Project Scientist Robert Disniak said in the press release, Yet there really is almost consistent noise from both natural and man-made sources. The ambient sound field at Challenger Deep is dominated by the sounds of earthquakes, both near and far, as well as the distant moans of baleen whales and the overwhelming clamor of a Category 4 typhoon that just happened to pass overhead. There was also a lot of noise from ship traffic, identifiable by the clear sound pattern the ship's propellers make when they pass by. Who would have thought that the oceans would be so noisy? Number 3. The more we know, the less we know. Given that there are whole fields dedicated to the research of ocean life, you would think that only a small fraction of ocean life is yet undiscovered. But in fact, it's estimated that about two-thirds of ocean life is still undiscovered. One of the main reasons for this is probably obvious. The ocean is huge, and it's impossible to search every inch of it with our current technology, and thus find everything that's out there. A great example is the coelacanth, an ancient creature that was long thought to be extinct until it was found very much alive in South Africa in 1938. So by that token, there could be other long thought extinct creatures that could be out there just waiting to be rediscovered. In recent years, scientists have admitted that their own scale and scope of what might be in the oceans has shrunk. 10 years ago, we thought there was at least 10 million species in the ocean. Now we think it's less than 1 million, says Ward Appletans, a marine biologist with the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization. It means that eventually we might be able to describe most of the unknown species. If you consider fish, we estimate there are 5,000 species still undescribed. We're discovering 150 new species of fish every year. 30 years at that rate, and it's mission accomplished. But there are also areas we can't fully explore as of yet such as the Mariana Trench, which holds numerous undiscovered life forms in both animal and plant categories. Number 2. The Depths of the Ocean In terms of depth in the ocean, the Mariana Trench is one of the deepest places in the world today that humans have accessed in the literal sense. To get there, you must go 36,000 feet below sea level and then keep going to reach its true bottom. For context, if you put Mount Everest into the ocean upside down, it would not even reach the trench. Since its discovery in 1875, off the coast of the Mariana and Caroline Islands, scientists from all over have been trying to find out more about this mysterious part of the world. The depths of this part of the ocean are so deep that nothing could survive there based on the pressures of the water alone. It would crush humans instantly and most metals without reinforcement. Yet many species of animal do live down there. The challenge is on to explore it further. Only three humans have ever gone down to the trench. Oceanographer Jacques Picard and USN Lieutenant Don Walsh were the first in 1960. And then, in 2012, legendary film director James Cameron made the trek. Combined, though, they were only able to be down there for a few hours. What might be even more mysterious than the trench is that some scientists claim to have found a pocket within the trench that could lead to an even deeper part of the ocean. But that hasn't been explored as of yet. So how deep does the ocean go? In truth, we honestly don't know. Number 1. Why is the ocean blue? 
If you were to ask a person why is the ocean blue, the explanation you're likely going to get is that the water of the oceans and the waters of the world are reflective. And since the sky is blue, the waters of the world are blue as well. And this is just not true. It's a logical explanation, but it's not true. The answer to this question actually lies in what's far above the sky, the sun. The sun gives us light via wavelengths of color. And how we perceive the world depends on how we interpret those wavelengths, such as how you can see the world in perfect color via your eyes, or have certain eye conditions and only see certain shades. When the color wavelengths reach the ocean, the waters actually heavily absorb certain colors. In this case, reds, purples, and ultraviolet. By that token, once it's absorbed, the color that stands out the most is blue. And thus, the oceans are blue. Technically speaking, the deeper you go into the ocean, the deeper color of blue you'll see. Because of how everything is absorbed. You might be thinking, but I've seen the ocean be different colors, and that's true. There are cases in which the ocean can be other colors, including red, green, or even clear. This is due to what's in the water, and how much light there is to absorb, as well as the amount of water molecules that are around. But if you've been diving, you'll know that sometimes all you can see is blue, and you can't even tell which way is up anymore. Thanks for watching, guys. Did you learn a little something about the ocean today? I know I did. What other interesting facts about the ocean do you know? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.